on the fall of its 16th birthday. This movie review will fall into a sleep like death. But for now, the one known as Tom Richardson will review Maleficent. And that was like the hokiest opening I've ever done. So, hi guys, welcome to a movie review. Um, I apologize, I've, um reviewing Maleficent very, very late. I know it came out on May 30th of this year. Um, didn't quite get around to seeing it opening weekend. Had a lot going on around the time this film came out. And I had, um, you know, several other movies that came out the weeks after that. So I luckily was able to see Maleficent before it left the theater. So better late than never. Uh, so I want to tell you about today on uh, my viewpoint of Maleficent, you know, what I thought about it. So in Maleficent, you guys, this film is a complete retelling of the original Sleeping Beauty story by the Disney company. Robert Stromberg, who I guess has worked on a lot of other visual effects um, on other big budget films. I think, I think he was a part of like um, Oz the Great and Powerful and Alice in Wonderland by Tim Burton. Um, he got to do a lot of the visual effects stuff for that, those other productions. So in this film, not only was he able to be a part of the visual effects team, he got to direct the film. And in this film, like I was briefly talking about earlier, um, it's a complete retelling of the original Sleeping Beauty story. This time around, we, it's, for the most part, completely around the Maleficent character. And, you know, kind of how she started off as a good person. Um, and, you know, kind of how she had this dark side that came later on with her life. And kind of how Sleeping Beauty herself works into her story. Uh, you know, how kind of how this kingdom and this princess and the, the king himself actually has a pretty big role in this too, you know, who's um, Sleeping Beauty's father. We kind of see how Maleficent has a grudge against him, kind of how, you know, they were really close at first. They thought they were going to bring Maleficent's kind and the human kind together. And um, through a series of events, uh, he kind of backstabbed her. And you'll see throughout the course of the film why that was the case. Um, you also get to see how Maleficent lost her wings and kind of like I was saying before, how to kind of how like she, you know, started off as this very good person, but became very, very evil and had all this hatred and revenge built up into her. And it kind of affected the way she lived for several, several years. Um, and like I was saying before, we also get to see kind of why she put this curse on Sleeping Beauty in the original story. So that part of it was kept from the original story. Um, and kind of how, you know, Maleficent kind of became this godmother figure to the Sleeping Beauty character. And, you know, kind of how she's always interested in her. She also wants to bring uh, her kind and Maleficent's kind together. Kind of like what Maleficent and the King were trying to do several years ago. And kind of how Maleficent's kind of haunted by that. And kind of how Sleeping Beauty is reminding her of that past. So this film is all about that. It's all about where Maleficent came from with everything. Why she did everything that she did in the original Sleeping Beauty story. There's even parts of this of the film where we're actually rooting for Maleficent. We really want her to succeed because you know she was very much backstabbed all these times in her life and kind of how she really wanted to bring this kingdom together as one and how this king kind of threw that all away just so he can get the throne to become king for this kingdom so i really enjoyed maleficent you guys it was a very good uh i thought it had a very good visual it had a good balance of both visuals and storyline uh, very little do we get that nowadays. We either get Transformers where it's completely blown, full-blown action, no storyline, or we get stuff that's all storyline, very little action, very little CGI. Um, but Maleficent was a nice blend of the two. I thought, you know, when I went into this film, I thought it was just going to be another special effects extravaganza. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised. There was a lot of really big uh, storyline elements that were used in this that were explored quite a bit, and they kind of put the visuals off to the side. They were still really emphasized during all these storyline sequences, but um, I liked how the film had a nice balance, how it kind of allowed itself to tell a good story while also being very visually stunning, very visually powerful, very neat to look at. So I liked how, and it was actually very smart of Disney to release this during the summertime because it has a very good balance of visuals and storyline, which a lot of these big summer blockbusters successfully do if they're good um and so i really enjoyed that aspect of maleficent i really liked how it really brought a whole new pr perspective to the sleeping beauty story to really um kind of understand where maleficent came from with everything because she was kind of put off into the shadows in the original the original disney film so it was nice to see you know kind of why 
she did what she did, and we got to finally see what why that was the case. So like I was just saying a second ago, for the positives and negatives, uh, for the positives, this one has a great balance of storyline and visuals. I was very blown away by the visuals, and I was very blown away, very blown away by um, all these big storyline elements that the film emphasized. And like I was saying before, it was really nice that they... Um, took like a good five to ten minutes for some scenes, you know, where the storyline was very, um, very much needed for those scenes, kind of just to really emphasize what was really going on. And, you know, it just kind of put the visuals, they were still there, but, you know, they they were put to the side appropriately, and I really like how the film does that a lot. Um, I also like how the film gives more meaning to the original Sleeping Beauty story. We get to see, you know, why Maleficent's crow wasn't, was significant to her, what that crow was used for. Um, it was also very, it kind of reminded me of the crow that was used for like Hujin and um, Odin, for those who know a lot about like Greek mythology and stuff like that, or um, Norse mythology, I think is with Odin. Uh, you know, it kind of reminded me of that crow character that Odin had. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they explain, you know, what the crow does, why it's kind of the messenger for Maleficent. Uh, I like how, you know, th th we got to see the dark side of the king, why Maleficent didn't like the king, why she put this curse on Sleeping Beauty. All that is explained in the movie, and I thought it was done very, very well. The film also, you know, it explains, you know, kind of how Maleficent had these wings, kind of when they were taken away from her, she kind of felt like a part of her was taken from her since they were so huge to her childhood. Um, I also like how the fairies have more significance in this story. Um, you know, Sleeping Beauty really thought that she, you know, these, these fairies were basically her parental figures her whole life. Little did she know that, you know, the king was just waiting for her to turn 16 to see what they could do with her because he didn't have no idea what this curse was capable of when she first turned 16. And that was also in the original Disney story too. So nothing really new in that aspect because, you know, that aspect was carried over from the original to this new film. But I liked how the, the fairies have more significance now in the story, too. Angelina Jolie and Ella Fanning, I thought, gave great performances here. Angelina Jolie, especially. She really, you really got a sense of trauma, a sense of, you know, really wanting to bring people together. She had a lot of heart to the character. I mean, it was really refreshing to see that for Maleficent because, you know, when you watch the original, she's very cold, very evil, doesn't really have a lot of emotion, doesn't really have a lot of, you know, human feeling. I like how they brought that into the character for this movie. I really like how it's she's a little bit more three-dimensional now. And, you know, we really kind of sympathized with her. She was really, she was really, um, they took a lot of things from this woman. And, you know, you can kind of see why she behaved the way she did in this Sleeping Beauty story. Same with Ella Fanning. I mean, she, you know, Ella Fanning, she, she had to work with what she had. I think Disney was also aware by the fact that this was more so a Maleficent story with Sleeping Beauty being a very big character in this, but it's not a Sleeping Beauty story anymore, technically. Um, but I thought Ella Fanning did a great job. I really bought into her character. I kind of had to remind myself that I was watching Ella Fanning on because I, I really thought like I was watching this character in this. Um, I also think the film has a lot of heart to it. Um, you know, the whole, you know, if tr true love's kiss can bring the woman back to life, you know, the girl back to life, uh, I, th that was done in an interesting way in this. Um, you know, we get to see a really, um, heartfelt side of Maleficent in this too, um, specifically with her and Sleeping Beauty, because her and Sleeping Beauty really bond throughout the movie. You don't think that they will, but they do. Um, so a lot of heart to it. I really, really like that about this movie. For negatives on Maleficent, I do think there should have been more ground rules for the Maleficent character. It got to the point where I don't even think the filmmakers themselves quite knew what Maleficent had for you know, super abilities, because it got to the point where, you know, they, they basically gave her any ability they needed just to kind of guide the storyline, what, what they needed for story points, like, oh, well, she has levitation powers, now she has this, now she has this, now she has this, now she has this. They kind of made up things as they went along. It got a little bit annoying. It kind of felt like it was just convenient just for plot and script purposes. So that got on my nerves every once in a while, but nothing, nothing, nothing huge for that. Um... 
I also thought the prince that uh, Sleeping Beauty was originally going to fall in love with in this, you know, for True Love's First Kiss and things like that. I thought that character was underdeveloped. We only get to see him for like three or four scenes. And when I say three or four scenes, they're very, very short. Like none of them go longer than probably 13 minutes at most. Uh, so very underdeveloped character. I really didn't buy to him being the love interest. The fact that he had such a small screen time too was quite clear that he wasn't going to be significant to the story at all. And which is surprising because from what I remember from the original Sleeping Beauty story, that character did have a lot of significance. The film also has some pretty rough scene transitions. There's a lot of scenes in the movie where there's really no closure to certain ideas. They kind of just go past it as soon as they need to get to the next story point just to kind of bring the story along and just, you know, guide it along and go on to the next main point. Uh, so it's like certain points, like, okay, well, we're not going to have closure. We're just going to go on to the next point. Okay, we're not going to have closure. We're just going to go on to the next point. Uh, though the film kind of tied up nicely at the end, this actually has a pretty good ending. I, I, you know, I've seen a lot of films lately that have pretty bad endings. So it was nice to see that Maleficent actually had a good ending, uh, which kind of brought everything together, I thought. But like I said, some of those scene transitions were just kind of rough. They just kind of ended just because maybe the director wanted them to end that way. I don't know. Uh, but I felt like they could have used more closure, and so the transitions just felt a little bit rough in the end. But overall, I give Maleficent an 8.5 out of 10. I really think it's a very good film, very good summer film. Uh, like I said, I just love those that balance of storyline and visuals. I really think it had a good, healthy balance in this film for those. Uh, like I said, I think the film could have benefited from some more ground rules for the Maleficent character. And the prince was a little bit underdeveloped for me. I really would have wanted a prince character that had more um, a three-dimensional take, more development as a character. And I would have liked to have seen some better scene transitions, more closure to the bigger ideas. Because some of the scene transitions in this were pretty rough and not really concluded in any way. But overall, Maleficent gets an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Very good film. If you're able to see it before it leaves the theaters, please do so. It's very good. And if not in the theaters, please run it at Redbox. I really think it's worth your time. Um, very good character study of this Maleficent character. And for those who like the original Sleeping Beauty story, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Brings a whole new perspective to that story. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. Very good. Make sure you see Maleficent.